all know me, but if not, I'm Marlene Solano, the Assistant Superintendent of Schools. Oh, and Marilyn Call has just joined us. Marilyn is the going to be taking minutes of our meeting today. So let me well start first by welcoming you all to the School Modernization Teacher Input Subcommittee. This is a committee of the School Modernization Committee. committee. Um, a little feedback. Uh, if we could all begin by muting our microphones, and that will hopefully facilitate the ease of this. I'm grateful for you all to you all for being here today. I'm sorry that we couldn't do it in, this in person. I know we would all much rather be doing this in person. <laughs> yes. Um, this subcommittee is chaired by Rich Gussenberg, along with um, team members Anne Marie Kemp and Jen Bates. Anne Marie is actually the chair of the School Modernization Committee of the Whole. So today they are, are they are joining us, and I really appreciate them giving us the opportunity to share share our thoughts about Darcy. So um, before we get started, I just wanted to um, make sure that everyone knows that this is actually being live streamed on our YouTube channel. So I want to say thank you to Mike Salamini for being here with us today and doing that. Each one of the subcommittee meetings at all of the schools has also been um, uh, filmed and televised on the town channel. So this will be the same as all of those, same but different. <laughs> I want to thank you for being here today, and I am going to turn it over to Rich Gussenberg, who is the chair of our committee. Okay, well, thank you all for coming. Um, just to give you a little bit of history, um, you probably know the School Modernization Committee uh, was set up by the Board of Education and the Town Council a few months ago. Uh, the idea was that uh, we had been trying to uh, make some headway in terms of updating our facilities and had hit some roadblocks and things weren't moving. So the Town Council and Board of Ed said, look, let's see if we can get together We'll name a committee that consists of board members and council members uh, and community members. Um, they had a uh, hopeful uh, timeline of having a proposal to the town council uh, for September. Um, that seems very, very difficult at this point in time, but we continue to work. We were off for about a month and a half uh, when the virus first hit. Uh, and we're up and running again um, through uh, Zoom right now. Um, this subcommittee uh, consists of the three of us. We have at times had other members of the committee sit in, particularly a couple of our town council members. Um, and our job is to talk to the staffs at each of the schools and get an inside look from their point of view in terms of what uh, is happening with the facilities. Um, we're not there to design programs or anything like that, strictly to talk about you know, the facility and whether the facility is meeting the needs of the, the instructional program. Uh, we've talked to the uh, staffs at each of the other schools. Um, your meeting, unfortunately, was scheduled for mid-March and then we shut down. So we never had a chance to get together with you. I didn't know if we were going to, so I had uh, talked to um, Jeff Sullen and, and Marlene last week and said maybe we could at least get some email input and it was suggested, let's see if we can set up uh, uh, a face-to-face -face meeting like this. Um, we're willing to take as much time as you'd like. Uh, we are, were scheduled for about a 45 minute meeting, but we've had some that have gone longer than that. And particularly, I think when there's some um, programs that are um, unique. Um, and I was just saying earlier when we first uh, logged on, uh, we spent a fair amount of time over at Humiston School talking to the alternative high school people because their program is not the norm and their needs are different and we really wanted to hear that. We have a report that's uh, going to the full committee next Wednesday um, and we'll be talking to them about the things that we've learned. We have a second subcommittee that's uh, out that I happen to be uh, a member of, uh, and that committee is was going around to different schools 
uh, looking at their facilities and comparing them to what we have right now. So just as a, a, a very quick update, um, I was an elementary principal for many, many years. And in fact, I was in Region 15 and all of the preschool programs for Region 15 were housed in my building. So um, although I don't know the unique and special needs of your programs, I have seen up close and personal uh, the needs of our special uh, needs, special our preschool students um, and all that that entails. And I've been very worried actually about what happens with those students during a shutdown like this. So I don't know, Anne Marie um, and uh, Jen, do you want to take a second and just introduce yourselves? Sure. Hi, this is Anne Marie Kemp. Um, happy to be here um, to hear this input. Um, I am a parent in the community, um, have uh, been a big fan of Darcy and, and the programs there. So really interested to see what you have to hear today. Um, and that's really it. We're just really here to hear you um, speak and hear your concerns. And I will just apologize in advance that I'm hopping off this call a little early due to uh, a work commitment, but um, I, you have me for about a half an hour. So thank you. And hi, I'm Jen Bates. Um, I'm on the committee as well. Um, I have two kids, one at Dodd and one at the high school, and I'm very invested in the schools. Um, I've volunteered in them the entire time my kids are in school, and I'm very interested to hear what you guys have to say. So thank you very much for all of you for taking your time to be with us today. Okay, and with that said, I'm going to, Anne, if you want to, Anne Donnery, if you want to uh, start us off and uh, we're going to do a lot of listening and not a whole lot of talking. So we just want right. to hear what's happening. All right. Well, thank you. I think first, thank you for giving us this opportunity. Um, it's really important to us to share a little bit about Darcy and what our needs are. As you said, we are a very unique school and um, we do serve the youngest students of Cheshire. And um, we are very, very proud of Darcy. We're proud of the work we do. Um, but certainly the building is showing its age. Uh, I do think I would be remiss if I didn't give a shout out to Rich uh, Clavette and his various maintenance crews because they really have kept Darcy um, beautiful in spite of its, its age. It's almost like an older woman who gets um, made up and made beautiful. And that's really um, how Darcy is at this point. There's um, some wrinkles and some, uh, some problems going on, but um, really, I think we're all very proud of our school. And for somebody from the public coming to look at Darcy, it really presents beautifully. So thank you to Rich and his crews for that. Um, thanks to all of my team. I sent out a, an email and we certainly got a lot of response. I have made a little bit of a list just so that we can flow with, um, it's not in any certain order, except I do know a few people have to leave early. So I think it would help if when I call on you, you just introduce who you are and your role at Darcy, and then um, simply state sort of what you are seeing as an area of need in Darcy. Um, so really just kind of, I'm gonna, I was hoping that our custodian would be here because he really was gonna talk to some of the real maintenance kinds of issues. And if he doesn't jump on, then I will try to end with some of those ideas that he had shared with me. So actually I'm gonna just jump straight into Cindy Jackson. Hi, I'm Cindy Jackson. I'm a physical therapist. Um, I've been at Darcy Oh, probably 30 years now. Um, I, I think one of the things Darcy has, and I, not being there, um, we've had uh, in the preschool, especially environments um, that are really conducive to being able to change environments and beam systems and things like that. And those have been really important to have. Um, so that, that part's really great. The um, I think over the years, um, ADA requirements, I, I'm not sure that we've kept up with them in this building. Um, I, I have had children in wheelchairs that um, uh, accessibility throughout all the environments, both in doors and on the playground, I think needs to be assessed um, closely. Um, I know we had a um, person from um, Board of Ed Services for the Blind that came and she was surprised that we didn't have um, on the stairs particular um, yellow paint on to distinguish things like that. So I, I, I do think um, 
having a priority of looking at the school from an ADA perspective would be really important. Cindy, not to interrupt too much, but um, what areas of the building are not accessible um, from the main floor? Um, the, the building is accessible to, to coming, to getting in. Um, we do have an elevator, which is important. I don't think all the um, the bathrooms in all the um, rooms are would able to fit like a wheelchair. Um, so I think looking at bathrooms, uh, some of the hallways where we have doors that shut off, say like preschool from um, kindergarten, uh, those doors I don't think all have um, access with a button. Um, so we you know, we have one way to get in with access, to, but I don't think the other side you can get in with access. Um, so I no right. So I think the cafeteria that, area downstairs that's a um, accessible yeah, we do have elevator. A, we have an elevator. Um, so that that's a, a real plus. Um, but to get to to get to the elevator, we actually have that space as an office. Um, so maneuvering a wheelchair, and, and I think um, Laura will be talking about that later because that is her office. Um, so I think maneuvering to get into the um, elevator is a little bit of a, an issue um, with a you know with a wheelchair. Um, so I, I think it's um, you know I think it's just to really have independent mobility. There are areas um, that are affected. And is there a separate PT room? No. Okay. That would not be the hallway. We have a hallway. Um, and, and, <laughs> I knew you had a hallway. <laughs> yeah. um, and to be honest, we do a lot of our therapy integrated into the classrooms. What we don't have is equipment readily available. So I need to, if I wanted a particular ball or a piece of equipment, many times. I would have to go outside the building to the shed to get it to come in to use it with a with a child. So um, equipment storage is a significant issue for as far as therapy. Okay, thanks. Um, Michelle, I don't know if you want to just jump in and talk a little bit about sort of your therapy and um, your equipment, just to, to piggyback off of Cindy. Michelle Torres. Torres has left the meeting. Hmm. So Michelle Torres has left the meeting. Yeah, she may have been. Um, I don't know. Liz Jockler, are you there? Sorry, I'm trying to, trying to. Yes, I'm here, Liz so, Jockler. I IT Liz, support. Um, Liz, I was just wondering. They were talking about the OT um, storage, and then you had talked about the room. So, do you want to just talk a little bit? Um, so, IT storage. Um, we have the IT rack where we have all our switches for all the the network computing environment, and it's shared with the OT support. And so a lot of times their equipment is so piled in there that we can't get to the rack. So we have to move everything out in order for us to even to, to reach the rack, which can be frustrating at times um, because you have to keep the door closed as kids are coming in and out and trying to maneuver the equipment. Liz, in order could to you do explain what the rack is? It's where we have all the um, network drops for computers uh, that allows access um, to the network environment. Yep, I knew what, what you were talking about. Okay, so um, so that, and it should be air conditioned, but it's, I mean, it's just a closet, but um, in theory, it should be t temperature controlled. And in this particular case, it's you have to walk through the storage area of, of the OT equipment in order to get to that arena. Thanks. And Liz, how big a room is that OT storage, would you say? Maybe three by eight feet I for the OT storage? Maybe, yeah, it might. It's one wall. It's only one 
one side has shelving and then there's shelving on the back of the wall. So maybe, yeah, it might be eight feet. It might, I don't even know if it's that, that big. No, Cindy's shaking her head no too. Three, three um, by five, maybe three by five is what I would say. Storage is something that we've heard from almost every teacher that we've talked to. There's a lack of storage everywhere. Yeah, yeah. and it's storage like trampolines, it's balls, it's it's ramps, it's very large equipment. It's It could be chairs that they use for children to sit in. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure they could speak to it more about what it is, but it's not small equipment. It's It can be very large adaptive equipment. Right. Yeah, I don't know if um, Michelle was able to come back on, but I think you get the point that it's multi-purpose spacing, which probably is a good segue to Maura Atro. You have to um, unmute Maura. There you go. Okay. So I have an office right outside the elevator. Maura, do you want to just say what your role is at Darcy? Yes, I'm Maura Atro, the speech language pathologist for uh, Kindergarten and Early Intervention Center. And I have a small office um, outside of where the entrance is to the elevator. Um, I've always liked the space, but um, whenever people have come in um, from outside, like the fire, um, department or um and looked at spaces um it's not the best um that my office is right there for accessibility purposes for children that may need it for if they have wheelchairs or they need to go up and down using the elevator or if our custodian needs to use it it's kind of hard for him to get out of the elevator and kind of go around my desk to get the materials out so that's an issue. Um, and then but, I have another... me, has the fire marshal ever raised a concern of having uh, a desk and things like that in front of the elevator area? He's never had a concern about the desk part as long as there's clearance, but mm -hmm. I have had to move some smaller um, bookcases that were in the way um, that have been recommended. But no, I don't believe so. No, Anne. We, we've it, it's already always been in compliance, but um, she does have to kind of reduce some of the storage sometimes. Okay. Um, yeah. but, um, and, and then off of that space, I have another enclosed space that I use for therapy purposes um, for my kindergarten children. Um, it's a small space. It's cozy. It's not quite a closet, maybe a little bit bigger. Um, my kids love it and I do too. However, the heating situation is up and down throughout the year. So sometimes in the winter, we don't get as much heat in that little room. So I use a space heater when that happens. And then it, during um, the warmer months, it becomes very hot. So I use a little fan in there. So, you know, we make it work. Um, but if you were to ask me, is it you know, a great um, space for young children to work in. Um, it's a little small and temperature wise, it can vary. Okay. Do you, um, do you, is that area quiet enough to do one-on-one -on -one testing? Yes, that, that's what I love about it because it does have a door and, and I, I think if we could get the, the temperature gauge better, I think it, it's a, great place to work um, and I wouldn't want to give up the space and right outside that space, the um, space that I was talking about that I have my office, quite a few of our instructional assistants work with, at a little desk with the children. So it's a great space. It's just that the elevator's there and it can be um, impacting that way. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Sorry, Ian, I don't know if you want me to talk now. Um, I was having technical difficulties when you called on me, so I left. That's okay. If you could just um, state yeah, your name and your role. Oh, Michelle Torres, um, occupational therapist. And I would have to kind of just agree with what's already been said about therapies. I think the biggest concerns have been um, definitely office spaces 
Um, my office is above the main office. Um, the only thing I really don't feel comfortable with up there is the, um, there's not a lot of air. I mean, I have a window that opens to the main office, but there's no like outside um, access. So it's kind of a, a space inside the interior walls. Um, and then the air conditioner, I mean, I, I feel like I would be risking my life if I were to turn that thing on, um, <laughs> and been there for a thousand years. So it's kind of just a stuffy enclosed area. Um, so it's, I try to spend as little time in there as possible. And then as far as the therapies, again, I think, you know, we don't, we're used to not having a separate space and that's why I think we're really good at working in the classrooms, but not having a designated area for testing, not having um, you know materials and the supplies at hand ready within the building and not having to leave like Cindy has already mentioned. Um, I would say those are the, the two biggest areas of concern. Great, thank you, thank you Michelle. So I think you're gonna see a reoccurring pattern or theme here about <laughs> space. And you know we have been incredibly creative as to how we use the space and I don't wanna sort of go on um, too much, but I think there's a few other people that wanted to talk a little bit about the space piece. And I'm looking at my list um, and I'm wondering, Kim, um, Kim Grabowski, our um, library and media specialist, I think that there's a couple of challenges in your space if you wanna share. Sure, um, main thing is air quality because of the location of the library, there really isn't an airflow so I've been blessed with the air conditioning unit that has really saved us in keeping it cool in there. And, but I also use it, whether it's proper or not in the um, winter time, sometimes it gets really hot and stifling in there. And it, you just feel like you can't breathe and it's heavy. I'll put it on for a few minutes just to clean out the air because there's only like one big heater and it gets really hot. Um, it's, it's just being, having airflow quality. Kim, about how large is the Library Media Center? Ooh, I am not good at that. I, Andy, yeah, are you good at that? A classroom, half no, a classroom? It's, it's quite small. I would say it would be probably the size of um, a large classroom. Let's say a, a kindergarten classroom at Highland would be probably the maybe size. Maybe twelve hundred square foot, something like that. Something like that. Um, I think that a reoccurring uh, throughout the building is we do not have any air conditioning. We have um, room air conditioners in units and some of them are quite old and um, really are not efficient. And I know that that is also a concern financially when they're running single room air conditioners that really are not efficient. Um, do the students have um, library media classes? Do they, do they go to the library for- yeah. So I think that that was one other thing I wanted Kim to kind of talk about was that it's a multi-purpose room. It serves as our um, music room, our library, our before and after school room. Um, we do our yoga in there and it's also our staff room for when we have our staff meetings. So it really is a multi-purpose room, um, which has challenges in itself that we have to share it with that many different um, mm -hmm. activities, um, which kind of brought me to Donna Nadi, who's the um, birth to three do you want to share a little bit about the challenges? And I know Kim can talk to it too because she's in the library when birth to three is in their area and the noise piece. I don't know who, Donna, you're muted. Sorry. Um, I think we impose a lot of noise on the people in the library and the yoga and things that are going on in the library, but we have a young population, lots of families, and we encourage people to be engaged and it's a very close proximity to the library. So I know that when people are in the library, we, we can, and we hit the bathrooms right there too, and our families are going into the bathroom and I know that can be a challenge, right, Kim? <laughs> I'm sure. Well, and there's also no real doors. So, I mean, I think if there were true doors that you could shut off, it would help with the sound. But because there are no real doors, it, it's one big space. But Kim, do you want to talk to that a little bit when you're trying to teach? Sure. It's a lot of um, flow of going from birth to three. If they're, if they're going to the bathroom, the bathroom is a big concern because that bathroom is shared not only with birth to three, activities when they're going on. The secretaries use that bathroom. 
um, after school, before and after school, use that bathroom. There's only one bathroom. <laughs> so that, that's an also an issue of flowing uh, traffic because everybody's trying to use that one area. Um, going like back that, is the bathroom appropriate for little kids? I mean, you say birth to three um, school. No, they have, to, they have to have a big step up stool in order to wash their hands. And the toilet is really an adult toilet for a, for a child, which it is, is okay. not ideal. And it's also not ideal to have children and adults using the same bathroom for right. obvious reasons. And there's only one toilet in there. Okay. So if, it, if it is off, which happens a lot, if some, some child is in there and there's an issue in there, then it's shut down. And then people have to go scrambling to go to the bathroom, you know, quite yeah. far away. So there is there other or is there another adult bathroom somewhere? So I, that was one thing that um, our custodian was going to speak to. And I'm uh, so I will chime in for him. We really only have one adult bathroom in um, the preschool wing and one adult bathroom in the kindergarten wing. And when you look at the amount of people we have here and mostly women, um, you know, it, it's really, it's not fair. It's very difficult on our staff. And um, so that is a huge concern for many people. And they're both single toilet. They're both, they're um, single toilets. Yeah. Okay. I think that the bathroom, um, both child and adult is a huge issue at Darcy. There's not enough children bath, child bathrooms. The um, the one in the kindergarten wing that is accessible to our kindergarten students um, is very outdated. Uh, it has very high urinals for um, five-year-old boys, which does not work very well. I can see no. some of my kindergarten teachers going, uh-uh. Um, so that it, so bathrooms are are an issue. And I know um, my secretary Tammy Gray's here and. I know that um, it's been an issue when they have to share with children and families. That's hard. So, and um, can I just add off of that, Ann? I'm not sure if it's part of um, what John was going to talk about, like storage. So I know that um, there's a very small storage closet for for uh, custodial um, items in the EIC wing in the preschool wing. Um, but then on the kindergarten side, I know a lot of the storage happens in the, the bathrooms. There's kind of like uh, shower stalls in the bathrooms that um, are used as storage. So that's where we're storing extra toilet paper and paper towels um, because there's not a designated closet. Thanks. All right. So while we're on the um, topic of storage, I'm wondering if... Um, well, I could go to Anne Marie Wittenberg. Um, not really storage, but office space. I know we've hit that, but maybe you have something you'd like to share. Sure. Hi, my name is Anne Marie Wittenberg, and I'm the reading and math curriculum support uh, teacher for Darcy and Chapman. And I actually don't have an office at all. <laughs> so I share a space with the school psychologist last year which in itself brings up its own challenges because I am working with teachers and discussing curriculum, um, helping with diagnostic testing with students and, um, and also working with students. So now at the same time, I am sharing a space with a school psychologist who's doing his own therapy sessions and confidential sessions and also his um, testing. So that is difficult to share the space. Now this year was a little more challenging because um, we had some students who needed um, a quiet space for their own therapy. And um, so the entire office was converted for student use. So the school psychologist and I didn't have an office at all. We would either use a corner of the art room or uh, just find a little space to put our stuff down. Um, and even using the art room, if the art teacher was there, then she's having an art lesson and he and I are doing our own things. Um, if art wasn't there that day, that space is also used by the special education teacher because he does not have a resource room or a space either. So, um, so you know, that brings itself its own challenges. Thank you. Uh, Kim Ambrose. Hello. Hi, I'm um, Kim Ambrose. I'm a preschool teacher. I'm sorry, um, I didn't hear. Can you hear me now? Yep. 
Okay. I'm Kim Ambrose. I'm a preschool teacher at Darcy. Um, I have a classroom that has two large storage closets, but which are currently being used as community storage. Um, we have a lot of stuff for preschool. Um, we need a lot of materials. Um, and we only have one common closet in the hallway that we can use to store our puzzles, our manipulatives, all the materials that we need for teaching. Um, so those two closets in my room are used for other community storage, which leaves little space for um, the storage that I need for, for my classroom. What sort of community storage is? I mean, what, are there outside groups that are using it or is it? I just mean um, storing the items that all of the preschool teachers use. So we oh, share materials. Like, community in the school. Yes, yes, our yeah, school yeah. community, yes. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm talking about um, like dress up clothes, um, puzzles, all those sorts of things that we share. Yeah. Now, the classroom is a fairly decent size, isn't it? I remember walking My classroom through. is a decent size, yes. Yeah. That was one of the, the big pros as I remember walking through the, the building is there were some nice size classrooms there. Mm -hmm. Yes, we certainly have a couple of nice size classrooms, but um, I think that the kindergarten teachers probably, Gina is smiling. Gina, do you want to pop in on that one? Sure, I'd love to. I'm Gina Morstro. I teach kindergarten at Darcy, and it is my sixth year here. Um, and we work together to kind of create this list, so it's not just coming from uh, me. Um, and Mr. Gustenberg, you were actually my principal at MES. I was a former cricket. <laughs> well, perfect. it's nice to see you grown up. <laughs> um, so I've regarding... gotten older somewhere along the way. Okay. Um, so regarding classroom size, um, our rooms are very small um, in comparison to other classrooms around the district um, with 20 plus students as you imagine uh, they grow pretty fast and trying to fit everyone you know for morning meeting around the carpet is it, it's pretty tight um we make Can it work give me some idea i don't know if you know um, the footage or something or... what do you think Anne? i mean it's probably half the size of a room at highland yeah um... honestly so the rooms at highland would probably be about 900 Something like that. Yeah. I have a square foot. I, I mean, I'm also not. I'm married to a roofer. You'd think I'd know my square footage, but I'm not good at that. That's okay. I, that's my, I was just trying to get a feel yeah, for it. One of these days, if we're ever let loose, I'll go measure in the rooms. Yeah, they are very small. And like Gina said, as the children grow, we, we feel it more and more throughout the year. And we really do accommodate it with, you know, not having a whole lot of furniture. And we really try to make, you know, the flow um, as best as possible. But with, with that many kids in a small space, it, it's hard. Um, limited storage, again, we have very small clo closet that doesn't really hold anything. We have some low cabinets that are pretty dangerous to even try to open. They, they are really kind of broken and they're attached by some glue in some spaces. They're just really old and, and not in great shape. Um, sharing spaces, so you've heard that. That's been kind of a, a theme of this. Um, the calf and the gym are a shared space. We don't have a, a, a gym area. So that is where we have our physical education is in the calf. Um, as you can imagine, our, our students can't participate in the same things that other kindergartners across the district who have a gymnasium can. Um, so it is, I think that's hard. And it, it, it seems a little bit unfair in that sense. Um, I think Mr. Webb does the best that he can in that space. And he'll use the outdoor space as much as possible, but that's weather permitting. Um, we already talked about music and library sharing the space, art with special ed and multiple other people. Um, our windows are kind of tricky. <laughs> they are, they don't have screens. So uh, imagine a fly or a bee coming in and how distracting that is to instruction when you have four five and six year olds. <laughs> um, so th that would be great if, if windows could be updated a bit. Um, I know the location of the office in, in regards to the parking lot and door access to get into the building we've talked about. Um, so we have parents that come into the front, but we have a lot of families that also come to the back door. So they have to be buzzed in. They're told to visit the office, get a pass first, 
sometimes they're not very compliant with that. So um, unless there's someone to stop them there, you know, they walk down and it kind of, it, it could disrupt, you know, the learning process or just, just mm -hmm. a, safe, a safety concern really. Um, so it's kind of awkward with the placement of where parking and entrances are. Heating and cooling is an issue. Um, I think my thermostat has been changed three or four times in the past, you know, several years I've been there, which really doesn't seem to solve the problem. Um, we've already talked about bathrooms and sinks. Um, we would love to remove the carpet if possible. I know in our, in our classrooms, we've talked about that, just having all tile and being able to put down carpets to create spaces rather than having the majority of our room is carpet and we have a tiny space of tile. Um, and we kind of try to work all of our tables in that one space and it, that's a bit cramped. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, in, unless anyone else from K has. Gina, before, you know, we, sure. Um, one of the things the Doolittle teachers were very, very adamant about was that they really wanted the kindergarten back at Doolittle. Um, and, you know, they were, we were talking about whether sixth grade should go to the middle school, um, but they kept, you know, very strongly saying, you know, the kindergartners and all the other schools are in their elementary schools. Uh, we would like to see a K through five school here at Doolittle. Do you have an opinion on that? I think I think all of our opinions might vary a little different um, based on our experiences. Um, I think Darcy is a really special, unique place, and it has some incredible things that other schools in our district don't have. So I I love having a place here, but I also see the benefits of being in a K through five. You know, with um, with those kids. One being I'd be able to see my students again next year. I'm so mm -hmm. sad that I'm not gonna be able to see them in the hallways when they go to first grade. Um, but I think we all kind of have different opinions on that. So I don't want to really speak for the group on how they feel about Kay being in the other. Okay. Well, as others speak, maybe yeah. they can also give their opinion on that. Sure. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Kim. Thank you, Gina. That was Thank a you. nice wrap up. Um, so Gina spoke a little bit about um, parking and security. I'm wondering, Tammy, do you want to unmute and jump in a little bit about um, security at Darcy? Sure. Um, my name is Tammy Gray. I'm the principal secretary. I'm at my 20th year at Darcy School. Um, so my concern is um, from a security perspective because I work in the main office and we had lobby guard instituted, I think two or three years ago, which is terrific. However, when a person comes into the office, they scan their license through lobby guard. And if we do get some kind of hit that there is, um, that they could be suspected for something when their license goes through. And it's happened a couple of times falsely, but it, we have gotten alerts. The person is standing right at my desk. <laughs> so, kind of awkward, like there should almost be a separate vestibule that if an alert does come up, they're not already in the building. The town is actually moving ahead with that. I okay. don't know whether Darcy was part of that because I think there's still questions about long-term what's gonna happen with Darcy. <clears throat> they hired an architect, the architect drew up plans for all the other schools to create what's called a man trap. And that okay. one was the bid, but unfortunately they only got one bidder so now they're going to go out and do a, do a bit again. But it's what you would talk about, where somebody would come in, they would be in between two sets of doors, mm -hmm. and they would uh, be checked in at that point, and then they would be allowed into the building. That would be great. And if I could just give my opinion on Darcy School, because I've been there <laughs> for 20 years, and I'm also a parent um, in Cheshire. When I moved to Cheshire and I heard that Darcy was just kindergarten, I thought, that's really odd. And I kind of didn't agree with it until my son went through Darcy. Um, it's such a special place. And we are geared for children that are from birth to five years old. And I feel like for their first school experience, they're only on the bus with kindergarten students. They're only in the cafeteria with kindergarten students and preschoolers. And I feel like they're protected for their first year of education. Um, mm -hmm. I just can't say how special it is. Thank you. Oh, that's my two cents. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, um, I'm wondering if Amanda or um, Rachel, I see uh, 
and I don't know if Eric is in or not. I don't see your picture. If any, either, I'm not putting you on the spot, but if you just want to talk about your thoughts on Doolittle Darcy and how that is feeling. Um, yeah, I'm Amanda Ciasiola. I teach kindergarten. This is uh, my second year at Darcy. Um, I've also taught first grade at Highland District, and I've been in a few other districts. Um, I also agree that Darcy does have a very special um, air about it in that it does cater to younger children. However, having been in other schools where um, there is, you know, K to five or K to six or whatever it may be, um, I just feel as though um, in some ways our kindergartners are at um, a little bit of a disadvantage having to then transition again um, to go to first grade. So um, there are other like school community things that they kind of um, miss out on as not having older role models in the school and, and things like that. Um, I just, um, I wish there was either um, a way to keep it consistent so that either all kindergartners were together in one place or all kindergartners were at their own um, home elementary school so that it would kind of be a level fair playing field for them. Well, I think it started out that way. Uh, years ago, there was an attempt to do some new construction. It didn't pass. And Darcy had been actually closed down. And they reopened it at that time as a kindergarten center. And I think all the kindergartens in the district were at the school at that point. Little by little, they've been moved back into their elementary schools, except for the, the Doolittle students, uh, because there's no space. Thank you. Rachel, did you want to say anything? Hi, I'm Rachel Cruz. I'm a kindergarten teacher at Darcy. Um, I feel very similar thoughts to Gina and Amanda. I think Darcy is a very special place. And I just love how it is so early childhood centered, which I think is just wonderful for our kindergartners. You know, they get a very special experience at Darcy. Um, because we are so focused on early childhood learning and development. So I think that's wonderful. Um, but I also, you know, kind of feel like with Gina, you know, it would be nice to go to see your, your students from year to year as they grow and develop, um, you know, like many of the other schools in the district and kind of keep that connection. Um, but also to have a little bit more of a collaboration and consistency with um, other colleagues such as at Doolittle and other activities and celebrations, you know, things like that. Um, so it's it's kind of a tough call. You know, I'm kind of on the fence in that way, too, where, um, you know, I do think we have a very special, unique environment. Um, but it would be nice to have a little bit of a closer tie to Doolittle, kind of our sister school. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, I'm just kind of looking at my list. I know here. I'm jumping in. Can I just add something when we're thinking about this? Um, I mean, it would be really far out there and kind of really far out of the box, but kind of joining those two ideas of the elementary school and early childhood, if we're really thinking like redistricting the entire district, um, creating a space that is just what Amanda's speaking about. So an early childhood school that's say pre-K through second grade, where everyone in the district would go, you know, and that would be that building. And then elementary would be say three, four, and five, and in middle school, six, seven, and eight. So you can really capture early childhood, um, but see it through so you know, a few years beyond um, so that you can create what's so unique about an early childhood center um, through those really crucial years. And then having your elementary experience in a separate building where everyone would transition at the same time um, I think would be a really out of the box kind of way to think about it. Yeah, thanks. There are some school districts who do that, I'm aware of. They do a yeah. K2 and then a 3-5 and then, and um, I don't, we haven't had any in-depth conversations in the uh, school modernization group as, at this point. Um, I think for the most part, uh, we would be, you know, kind of led by the uh, school administration in terms of what they're looking for. Um, a lot of the discussion so far has been where should the sixth grade be? Should it be in an elementary school? Should it be in a middle school? 
Um, and that's that's been a lot of the focus because that obviously has a huge impact if if we were to look at, for instance, building a new middle school, how big was that school, that sort of thing. Um, haven't had any in-depth conversations about restructuring everything else, but that could come out of all this, you know, depending on where the money is and what the facilities look like. Thank you. Marnie, do you wanna talk for a minute? Hi, um, I'm Marnie Roberts. I am um, one of the special education teachers in the building. I have what's called the intensive ed class. I have both kindergartners and preschoolers. Um, so I have a comment about the kindergartners at Darcy. It's a really good for my most intense needs students to have that two year experience or that multi year experience. Um, not all of them are ready for an elementary education system that looks different than Darcy. So I, my kids are supported um, based on kind of their developmental needs at Darcy in a way that an elementary school would have a, a more difficult time to do. Um, the other thing that I wanted to bring up, which you've kind of heard a lot about is the special education K doesn't have a resource room. So, um, some of those kids don't need to be in my intensive ed environment, um, but they do need a space to, to have therapies outside of their um, general ed classroom. Um, they also need a space where they can go to have a sensory break or just a, a time out of the room to um, you know, have some additional instruction. And that is sometimes done in the hallways um, it's sometimes, which isn't always the most appropriate spot or um, most beneficial spot. I think that the, there is often the special education um, is brought into the art room when the art classes aren't there, um, but they don't have their own everyday space and to kind of have their needs met on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. um, so. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I'm looking out and I see Karen Clark. Karen? Yep, hi everyone. Karen Clark, I am the building sub for, this is my sixth year there. So I have the opportunity of getting to work with all the students in the entire building um, from pre-K to EIC to kindergarten. And so I can see where some of the safety concerns are and particularly the gates, um, the playground, going to the parking lot, um, the nature trail. Um, as I said, I have the pleasure of being company with some very impulsive, curious children that like to maybe go try to explore on their own. And it's very easy for them to open those gates. So um, I was just wondering if there's a way to install what is seen on public playgrounds, those push button um, gates where they cannot reach, but an adult can get to it. Is this um, behind the building or in front of the building? I, I apologize. In the back of the building. The in the back of the building. Okay. The rear entrance. So there's, I think, at least six gates. I can think maybe a couple more that um, kids have the potential of, of leaving if they yeah. if they flying to. I mean, we, we do do our very best to keep our eyes on everyone, but there are some pretty quick little friends that um like exploring on their own and uh, and sometimes it's very hard to catch them so just as a even for kids leaving the building especially preschool with their parents leaving that back entrance I've seen oh, numerous times um the ones that aren't do but break free and still run back and laugh. it's a very busy time of day but there could also be a leaving that back just stop them. So Karen, um, I'm kind of fading out. So I'm just going to kind of highlight. I think what um, Karen really talked about or touched upon is um, our uh, 
access to the building through the parking lots and it's really quite unsafe with our buses coming in and out and i know that in many other schools they've talked about the bus the bus lanes or the lack of bus lanes and we have a very um, high population of special needs so we have a lot of small um, minivans coming in and out of the back and that's also where our parents park and they have young children so it's just it's not ideal and it's really not safe so um, that I think is, you know, in a newer school, they probably give more thought nowadays to how parents access the building and where the bus lanes are for- And all the new schools now, they separate out all the parent yeah. cars and their own driveway right. from the buses and, and keep those in a whole separate area. Um, you have large buses that come in the front and the mini so we buses- We have large that? buses that come in the bus, um, the, we call it the bus loop. And then yeah. the small buses go to the back of the building and parents come both to the front of the school and to the back of the school, especially with the toddlers and the, the smaller children to the back of the school. And, um, you know, it's a lot of traffic and often the cars don't stop when the buses are loading because they don't really recognize that it's a loading bus. Mm -hmm. So we've been cited multiple times for parents not adhering to bus regulations. Um, so it, it's just, it's really um, not ideal. Yeah, we've had several principals express that concern yeah. uh, that there's, you know, students walking between buses to get into the building, you know, things like that. So yeah. that, that obviously is an issue. Right. And then also, if you could just add one more thing in, um, the corral where Mr. Webb, the gym teacher, uses sometimes um, there's openings also to that that children can leave. Um, so if we can maybe gate off openings as well. And I also think the height of that fence might be a little too low because um, they, they tend to climb on top of it as well. And it can be a very easy hop over if, if they're so inclined. <laughs> um, but I think that's another example of how Jerry Webb, our PE teacher, makes use of every space available. And that is a space outside of our building that he can use when he can't have access to the gym so yeah and it's not um, compliant with any early childhood regs as far as the height of the fence um, so yeah that is a problem i noticed that um cheryl o'day our school nurse is on and i'm wondering if we could go to her hi i'm here hi cheryl i'm wondering hi. if you have something you wanted to share pretty much similar um the windows don't work the air conditioner's old the office is either hot or cold um pretty much similar to everybody else the bathroom is an adult toilet and i have three four and five year olds using it and at least sometimes staff can use it if the other one is busy but the sink is tall the toilet is an adult size in my office so things like that Mm -hmm. And your changing room for your children that require a changing table um, also serves as a laundry room and as a supply closet, right? That is correct. So the nurse's station consists of um, an office area and a changing room, two separate spaces? Yes, I have the one office where I have my desk and my file cabinets and the fridge where the ice and such is kept. I have one bed in there and okay. then there's a door into a back room and that has as ann said the washer dryer which has been a godsend and it's got storage of extra clothes for kids it's got a file cabinet with extra shoes for kids it's got a changing table um, when birth to three is hopping all the parents come up to my office to change the children and with the other things that need to be going on in my office that can be a little challenging sometimes but as everybody else we work with it we do work with it. We we work around it. Is the one bed adequate for a school that size? Um, there is no other place to put it. Okay. I but have <laughs> um, yeah yeah. There's no other place to put it. I have one small bed, and I have a couple of chairs that the children need to sit in. But there's no. If somebody's really sick, I can't have the other children coming into my office. They have to sit outside waiting to come in, mm -hmm. because of the germs and such like that. Right. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I'm looking at my list. Sabine, are you there? Yes, I'm. Yes, I think Kim Krabowski. So I'm the library tech 
um, I think Kim talked about the problem of isolation between rooms and you explained that the room, the library room is used for many things, many meetings. So that's a problem. The aftercare, noisy, when you have meeting of a or birth to tree, a lack of isolation, I think it's a problem. And the bathroom, of course, next to the library room. Okay, thank you. Nelia? Hi, I'm Nelia Luis I'm over at the intensive care classroom. Um, my concern is about the sink that where the children will wash their hands, which is going to be a must and a lots, lots to do around this time. Um, and we have a large kitchen sink, which is a double kitchen sink with a countertop that really is not conducive to children to be independent under hand washing. So we're here to get children independent and first thing to do is to wash your hands before we start working in the classroom. We need to put a block system on the floor near the uh, kitchen sink styled um, where children can reach over and try to lift the uh, faucet and wash hands well it, within like a six by six space. There's other things within that area as well, like a, a storage unit on the other side. Um, on the other side, we have another uh, large storage unit. So it really gets really tight. So adult and children in there is a, a tight space. And uh, many times I've, in 15 years, have tripped over those blocks, that block that the children need to step on to get to washing hands and always caught myself, which is a good thing. But I could, you could see it could be hazardous for the adults and children to step on that block. And because it's not a big space that you can't really have mobile access to, you know, having more space for that large sink. A smaller sink would be great, child sized, and, and get rid of that double sink for a kitchen countertop if that's gone and just a sink for children. It's so much more conducive for safety um, and children accessing for independent washing. Thanks, Thank you. Jessica. Can I just jump in on that before Jess talks? Yeah. Um, I'm Erica Pincus. I'm a kindergarten teacher. Um, so Nelia brought up a point that I was thinking about, and that was um, the sinks. The kindergarten classrooms only have one sink. Um, and that's difficult for hand washing before lunch, before snack, when children enter the room. Um, and also we have two classrooms sharing one bathroom. So this year that was over 40 kids sharing one bathroom in the classroom. And that one bathroom has one toilet and yeah. one sink where there's yeah. no sink in there. Correct. Okay. So. That was where do the uh, students put their coats and their boots and all that sort of thing? Do you have space for those in the classroom? Yeah, they have a cubby area. Okay. Yeah. Are any of your children sharing a cubby at this point? Yes, I have. Uh, every student is sharing a cubby. Um, and then we ran out of cubby space, actually. And I had to have smaller cubbies from the preschool wing brought into my classroom to accommodate the extra children in my classroom. All right, Jessica. Um, I just wanted to put it out there that we had kind of talked about the kindergartens being divided up across and back into their home schools. As a preschool teacher, I almost feel the opposite of that. I'm hoping our preschool is able to stay together as a unit. Um, I think the, the early childhood part of things um, and the collaboration and the unity among that team, I don't think it's enough to say there's two or three in every building. It would probably just be one in every building. And that would, um, I just don't think that would be as effective of a program if there was only one preschool in every building. Uh, just to be clear, I haven't heard from anybody that they wanted to split out the pre-K. I just kind of, just hearing the kindergarten, I kind of thought, yeah. Well, the only thing we heard when we talked to the Doolittle staff is that they liked having the, the students in the building from K on so that they, the students had that consistency in the same building. Um, but there was no discussion that I've heard in any way about um, moving the pre-Ks to multiple spaces or anything. But 
you know, anything could happen. I don't know. <laughs> well, that's, that's any, I don't want you to walk away thinking that there's some agenda out there. There isn't that I'm aware of. I, I do think that we all are in the firm belief that um, an early childhood center in Cheshire is a huge asset for the town of Cheshire. Um, you know, it is, Darcy is known throughout the state as a really exemplar early childhood program. And, and part of that is because everybody works together as a transdisciplinary team. And, and really, when we think about early childhood, it's not just pre-K, it's it's birth through grade three. And, you know, the state and even uh, the feds are really looking at the early childhood piece through grade three. So I think that once again, Cheshire could be ahead of the game by recognizing through grade three and thinking about a school that supports early childhood. Um, you know, it really, it's, it is an amazing, unique model. And uh, so that, that's my pitch. I know I'm on my way out, so I won't say too much more, but uh, it, it really is an incredibly unique and special, special um, place. As everybody knows, I know that the town of Cheshire recognizes and appreciates that. Um, I don't know if there's anyone else that wanted to speak. I think that we've um, really covered all our bases. Uh, and the only thing I wanted to ask, um, in terms of space for staff, we talked a little bit about the nurse's office, the main office, the um, the bathrooms. Um, what kind of a teacher's room is there in the building? We have a um, staff lounge with okay. um, that is adequate. I would say it's adequate. Um, I think that one thing about um, the way Darcy is set up, teachers don't have common planning time. So the kindergarten teachers never get together. So it's not a space that's um, overcrowded, uh, I would say usually. Um, but I also think that a, a ideal model would be for teachers to be able to have common planning time. And I don't know how that would look or if that's even for here. Um, the only part that is somewhat difficult is when we wanna have our staff meetings, we do have to have um, tables and chairs set up in our library and then mm -hmm. taken back down again for the library class. And then if we have another meeting set back up, so it's sort of a lot of, um, there's no kind of common space or, um, you know, for parent meetings, everything has to be set up, that kind of thing. Do they cook lunches in your building? Yes, they do. It's a, um, well, the, the lunches are brought in from um, Chapman, but we do serve hot lunch. And there is a, a nice kitchen. It's, I would not call it a full kitchen because she can't really cook. She warms up. Um, but it, but they've done an amazing job when but we did okay to make part. it work. Okay. Um, I just saw Gina popped up. So she said uh, she yes. just, just one other thing. Um, and I don't know if this is really the perfect venue for this, but um, our traffic situation on our road um, coming in, if, there, if there's any way we could look into getting um, some more signage, um, maybe possibly a blinking light. Um, I was in a pretty significant car accident um, right in front of Darcy on January 3rd where my car was totaled. Um, so it's just, it's a really tough spot. I was stopped to turn and left and the person was going about 55 and hit me while I was stopped. and. Anne came running down and she, you know, I, I luckily was able to walk away from it, but um, I think it's a really, really tricky spot. And I don't feel like there's enough adequate um, signs or just awareness of that there's a school here because it is a state road, you know, it's set back yeah. um, and people are flying off the highway. So I don't know if this yeah. is a venue for that, but. Yeah, that's a state highway. And I would suggest, you know, that um, Ann work with Vince um, if, if, you know, the school really wants to pursue that, they need to get up to the state because uh, it is a state highway. So yeah. it is signage and putting in lights, anything like that, they have to go through that. I don't think the school modernization committee will, you know, be able to, to deal with that sort of an issue. Sure. Okay. Just want to throw it out there. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Jen Bates, I don't know if you had anything that um, you wanted to state or question or anything like no i didn't have any other questions it was all very interesting um and i made lots of notes here so hopefully um we'll be able to address these issues um, going forward when we decide on a plan okay i thank you all uh as i said you know we uh have a full committee meeting a week from today next wednesday uh we'll be presenting um our report at that time um all of our meetings are available uh, live streamed um, and um, 
I think you already received the email. If there's anything that comes up and you want to send us uh, an email, it's just uh, what Cheshire. Let's say um, I never remember. We'll get it. <laughs> we'll get it. We'll get it. Well, it'll send it. Um, <laughs> well, we have had some staff members at other meetings who have then sent some emails after the fact, something that uh, maybe they wanted to uh, expound on or you know hadn't thought of. And so we'd love to hear from you uh, if anything else comes up. And we appreciate everything that you're doing. I don't know just where we're going to go. Um, obviously, the uh, situation has changed somewhat now with um, you know. Uh, a, a recession in the town and that sort of thing but um uh please stay involved and if you have more input uh, we would uh, really love to hear it well thank you rich and thank you um for your time today this is really wonderful all right thanks everyone, thanks, everyone. thank you thank you thank you thank you bye-bye bye-bye